Welcome to TV Recaps. Today I will be recapping an American dystopian drama. In a world facing a repopulation crisis, a patriarchal, totalitarian theocracy known as the Republic of Gilead has overthrown the United States government. Before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for our channel. Please sit tight and enjoy the recap of the TV show, The Handmaid's Tale, Season 5. For recaps of Seasons 1 to 4, refer to link in description. Oh, and of course, spoilers ahead. The show begins with June Osborne returning home to her daughter, Nicole, her husband, Luke, and her best friend, Moira, covered in blood. She confesses to killing Fred, her ex-commander. June finds out Emily, a fellow ex-handmaid, after taking part in Fred's brutal murder, has gone back to Gilead to continue fighting and left her family behind. She has a breakdown and, despite Luke's protests, turns herself in. However, as the murder took place in no man's land, and not under Canada's jurisdiction, June gets away scot-free. Serena, Fred's wife, is informed by Mark, representative of the American government in exile, of Fred's demise and that charges will not be filed against June. She is both angry and terrified. After viewing Fred's body at the morgue, Serena walks through a candlelit vigil held in his memory by Canadian Gilead supporters. She returns to Gilead for Fred's funeral and pressures Commander Joseph to make it an international event. Fred is given a grand funeral that is broadcasted worldwide. Luke and June witness the entire event and are shocked to see their daughter, Hannah, presenting Serena with flowers during the funeral. Meanwhile, Esther, a former wife turned handmaid, is being considered for a posting to the Putnam household. Commander Warren takes a liking to Esther and spends some private time with her in his room. She steals some chocolates from Warren and shares them with Janine, who has been acting as her mentor in the Red Center. Unbeknownst to her, Esther has poisoned the chocolates in an attempt to kill both Janine and herself. She professes her hatred for Janine for manipulating her, before they both cough up blood and collapse. A distraught Aunt Lydia prays for Janine's recovery. Sometime later, Janine comes out of her coma and, with physical therapy, is slowly able to walk again. On the way back to the Red Center, Aunt Lydia promises Janine that she will show more compassion to handmaids under her care from now on. Despite her wishes to remain in Gilead, Serena is ordered by the Council to serve as a diplomat in Toronto to paint a positive image of Gilead to the international community. Serena reluctantly returns to Canada. She is released from the custody of the American government and commences her efforts to build a Gilead cultural center. Later, June arrives at the center amidst an argument between Gilead supporters and protesters, Moira being one of them. A Gilead supporter punches Moira in the face, and in response, June pulls a gun on him and fires a shot into the air. This causes mass panic, prompting Urza, Serena's bodyguard, to evacuate her from the building. While escaping, however, Serena runs into June. She has the perfect opportunity to shoot Serena but hesitates when she sees her baby bump and runs away instead. Urza drives Serena to the Wheeler household to seek refuge from violent protesters. She gets to know her new Canadian hosts, Alanis and Ryan Wheeler, who are overly invested in her pregnancy. To protect her baby, Serena is confined to the house and not allowed any form of external contact. She breaks down in tears. Sometime later, June finds out from Nick, Nicole's father and a Gilead commander, that Hannah is currently attending a wife's school for wives in training. June and Luke embark on a dangerous quest into no man's land to meet a friendly guardian who has more information on Hannah. After getting the information from him, Luke and June spend the day hiding in an abandoned bowling alley. Once night arrives, the guardian brings them back to Canada via a shortcut. Unfortunately, he steps on a landmine and triggers an explosion which alerts other guardians to their location. Luke and June make a run for the border but are caught before they could make it. The Guardians are acting on orders from Commander Ryan, who informs Serena that June has been captured. Serena pleads to be able to witness her execution to get closure for Fred's death. Back in Gilead, Warren and Joseph discuss the future of the country. Joseph wants to build a modern, liberal settlement on an island, called New Bethlehem, where Gilead refugees are granted amnesty and reunited with their loved ones as a way of improving diplomatic relations with the rest of the world. Warren is strongly opposed to the plan and ridicules his efforts to get it approved. Later, Lydia is shocked to learn that Esther is pregnant. She finds out Esther was violated by Warren during their private session, one day prior to her posting to the Putnams. After Lydia reports the incident to Joseph, Warren is arrested and publicly executed by Nick in front of his wife, Naomi. 
Next morning, Luke is dropped off near the border while June is taken to meet Ezra and Serena. June is shocked to see her. Serena requests to execute June herself and asks Ezra for the gun. However, instead of killing her, Serena shoots Ezra and orders June at gunpoint to drive through no man's land. Mid-drive, Serena goes into labor and starts experiencing contractions. Unfortunately, they crash the car and had to seek refuge in an abandoned barn, where Serena's contractions intensify. Despite June's animosity towards her, she could not leave a pregnant woman to die and stays to help Serena deliver her baby. She names her newborn son Noah. Serena begins to develop a fever and June insists that she goes to a hospital in Canada. She refuses, claiming that she has served her purpose as a vessel to deliver Noah to a mother who deserves him, such as June. In a calm and unyielding manner, she responds. You love him, and you wanted him so much. You're his mother, and he belongs with you. Do you understand me? They arrive at a hospital where both Serena and Noah receive medical attention. June calls Moira, who sends Luke to pick her up. On their way out, immigration officers, called by Luke, arrest Serena for entering the country illegally and tell her that Noah will be placed with the Child Protection Unit. Serena cries hysterically and begs June for help. Anti-refugee sentiment escalates in Canada, and June's family faces frequent harassment from protesters. With Warren dead, Joseph's plan for New Bethlehem proceeds smoothly. He invites June to move to New Bethlehem with the promise that Hannah will be moved there once she is married. Although June is seriously considering Joseph's offer, Luke vehemently rejects it. Mark tries to dissuade June from returning to Gilead, as she is a symbol to the resistance and is worried others will follow her back. A mysterious envelope arrives with a video of Hannah in a wife's school. Mark uses the video to track her location and informs June that they will be conducting a military raid to rescue her daughter. June is overjoyed. Unfortunately, Gilead anticipated the attack and shot down all three planes with their anti-aircraft systems. Joseph calls June, claiming the attack was in self-defense and asks again that she joins New Bethlehem. Furious, she turns down Joseph's offer and reveals that she watched his late wife overdose from sleeping pills and did nothing to stop it. To obtain more reliable intel, June meets with Nick to convince him to defect from Gilead in return for immunity in Canada. Despite his love for June, Nick declines the offer because Rose, his wife in Gilead, is pregnant. June is happy for him but is also sad to lose him. Meanwhile, Serena is in immigration detention where she pumps breast milk for the Wheelers, who are now Noah's legal foster family. Joseph tells Serena he can get her out, but only on the condition that she stays with the Wheelers. Serena is released into their custody. Alanis admonishes Serena for being a bad mother and only allows her to feed the baby, while she takes over all other duties of motherhood. One night, Serena requests to make an appearance with Noah at the reopening of the Gilead Cultural Center to recruit more Canadians to join Gilead. Ryan agrees to her request, much to Alanis' outrage. At the center, Serena excuses herself to feed Noah in private and takes the opportunity to escape via the back exit. Back in Gilead, Joseph, to increase his position of power, asks Naomi to be his new wife. She is initially hesitant to marry her late husband's killer but decides to accept Joseph's proposal to maintain her status in Gilead. Commander Mackenzie, Hannah's adoptive father, brings up June to Joseph and states that it is time to fix that problem. One morning, while June is walking on the road, a truck with a Gilead bumper sticker knocks her down and runs over her arm. Before the driver could kill her, Luke intervenes and beats him half to death. June is rushed to the hospital. Nick finds out about the attack and finally accepts Mark's offer to spy for them in order to protect June. Blaming Joseph for the attack, Nick punches him at his wedding and is immediately arrested. Rose visits him in jail and is disappointed that he is still in love with June. After expressing that she is done with him, Rose leaves. Meanwhile, Janine, long overdue for her posting, is assigned to Joseph and Naomi. Delighted at the chance to spend more time with her daughter, Janine tries to get along with Naomi. However, after hearing from a Martha that June was injured by a targeted attack, she loses her temper and lashes out at Naomi. As a result, Janine is removed from her posting and arrested by the eyes. Back in Canada, the driver who attacked June has died from his injuries. Rita informs Luke that the police will issue a warrant for his arrest very soon. June, Luke, and their daughter Nicole book air tickets to leave the country immediately. 
Mark arrives to inform them that the police will be waiting for them at the airport and offers them new travel documents for a train bound for Vancouver. At the train station, the police are seen patrolling the boarding area looking for Luke. June, you gotta get on the train. I don't wanna do it alone anymore. June, we're gonna find each other. I love you. I love you, June Osmo. Luke draws the attention of the police and gets arrested. June boards the train with Nicole, devastated that she had to leave Luke behind. June hears cries from another baby and makes eye contact with Serena and Noah who, by pure coincidence, have landed on the same train heading west. The end. Please stay tuned for the next TV recap. Comment below on what you liked or disliked about our video. Thank you for watching.